Hey, good morning. I'm coming to you from my house today. I've got my, uh, well, I was going to show you my doggos, but then they ran off. <laughs> um, I'm doing things a little bit differently today, which is always fine and good and okay. Um, this is my daughter's birthday today, 17. So I was busy getting her her favorite Starbucks treat this morning. She actually has to spend her day taking the ACT. Whoa, that's no fun. Um, but it's okay. I had to get her nourished and celebrated and off to a good start. Um, so, to do, but this morning I did read uh, 1 Timothy, the last chapter, chapter 6. And I'm call, so I'm calling today One Upmanship. This is where Paul is putting in the warning of um, being careful about the love of money and also the love of knowledge. And this is, these are ways um, that really, if we're not careful, they can really, of course, distract us, feed our egos. And really, what's even more insidious is that it causes us to think a little bit more highly of ourselves in especially in comparison to others. It allows us to have a little bit of a feeling of superiority. That's what one, one upsmanship is actually in the dictionary. It is a term out there, like you put yourself one up, you know. And we have to even be in careful of this in the church. Uh, many people serve um, from this position. We have, it's, it's an insidious, ego, prideful problem that can show up in many other ways just than the love of money or title or knowledge. Um, so it's good to always check your motives of why you're doing something. Um, even in serving people and being helpful, uh, we can do it from a place of superiority. I've got, you need help. I am better than you. I am superior and I can help you. So um, Paul uses knowledge and money as examples of what can happen to us humans, but it can happen with lots more than just money. And it was something that when I, as I've been doing my own ego work, um, the whole, that serving really came into my radar. It was my way of being good. And of course, when I th try to think of myself as good by doing things, certain things, and that is my motive, then it also causes me to, uh, you know, in order to think of yourself as good, because of the way language works, I had to have a, a litmus test or a comparison of what not good was. <laughs> and of course, if I'm being, if serving means I'm good, then people um, that aren't serving are not as good. So I'm one up from them. And then also in my attitude towards those that I'm serving and helping. So we've really got to check our hearts of why we're doing things. Um, and, and lots of things are good. You know, Paul tells us like everything is permissible, but not everything is beneficial. And why we've got to really be living consciously, which is why Paul talks a lot about having a clear conscience. That's how you do it. And my, <laughs> they're, they're my dogs now. They're being very playful. Hopefully they won't start barking here and interrupt. Um, I'm like, can you go in the yard and play? They're like my little shadows. Are your dogs like that? They, they just love us, don't they? They're so sweet. Anyway, they're full of energy this morning. They love this. Um, they're both fluffy, and so they're loving this a little bit cooler mornings. It kind of gets them going. It makes us all a little frisky, doesn't it? Anyway, so living consciously takes time. Living conscientiously takes time. It takes intention. It takes self-awareness, honesty, humility, um, being able to die to the false self. This is why the Enneagram has helped me so much. I talk every now and then I talk to you guys about the Enneagram, but it really does 
Um, and I use it in my work and my coaching and helping other people too, because it's like Google, Google translator for personality. And it really helps us get in there and see what are our particular weaknesses because humans are all wired differently. And we have, um, each of us have sort of a core motivations, but there's some patterns. Um, there's always patterns with humans and in nature and somebody picked up on these patterns, but they're also there in the book of Proverbs. Um, you know, the sort of the deadly sins and, or the ways that we are foolish and prideful and the way that we are um, in the path to wisdom and what wisdom looks like. And it's all about your motivations. What are your motivations? And when we stay focused and staying focused on God and love takes a lot of time and energy like that. If, if our focus is there, it will sort of auto correct these other parts. But if we don't, if we're not doing that and, and maybe our time with God is just like checking a box um, and whatever God means to you. Um, but I, uh, of course, am reading the Bible. Hello. <laughs> but, and, and so what I know what God means to me and spending time and the more I've increased my time on that, um, the less time is taken up by all the mental gymnastics, emotional gymnastics of trying to, um, you know, check in with my ego, it will what's my motivation here or just falling into the autopilot of what my ego wants me to do and um what those self and and the ego wants a lot of things like it's a hung it has a hungry appetite it's hungry and hungry for money hungry for power hungry for one upsmanship being one up from our fellow humans Feeling, that is where we, if we're not careful, this is where we're getting our feeling of worth and value and belonging. Oftentimes it comes with a lot of praise and admiration and all of those other things. It's very ego gratifying. The way of God and the way of love, it's a little bit, it's much more rewarding and deeply satisfying in the long run and nourishing but not at first. <laughs> it is hard. So to stay on that path um, and get to that point where it, that type of life brings its own rewards, we have to, um, we have to do it anyway. And we have to really, it takes a lot of time and attention and intention, um, doing our best. This is where doing our best and conscientiousness come together. Paul talks a lot about those two things. And um, it, it there's no requirement to be perfect in there. There's plenty of room to be human because humility, we can always go back and humble ourselves, repair, repent, always, always, always. And as a matter of fact, that is where a lot of um, connection to God, to ourselves, true authentic connection comes from is in that humility and repentance part. So um, if you catch yourself, it's okay. We're human. If you catch yourself doing the one upspin thing with whatever your mode is to get that from, and you're operating from your ego, it's okay. Like as soon as you become aware of it is an opportunity to fix it, to do the work and fix it. And humble yourself, humble your ego, and um, connect back in with yourself, connect back to God, and course correct, and get back on the on the better path. Um, so there's no requirement for perfection here. As a matter of fact, the more you try to be perfect at it, the more you're going to fall into the trap of it. Um, because trying to be perfect is just another form of one-upsmanship. So the only way to right yourself and get on an even playing field is through what will feel like the, to the ego, one downsmanship, <laughs> like humbling yourself. Um, but really it takes a lot of strength and courage and vulnerability um, and self-awareness. All It takes love. It takes love is what it takes. <laughs> love of yourself, love of God, love of other people. 
Um, and our ego will uh, go down fighting and screaming and kicking and, you know, all the things. But it will go down. And then it will learn through... Um, through repeated evidence and exposure and experience that, oh, it will relax and it will go, oh, okay, life is better this way. Okay. All right. All right. I can do it. Like it will, it's like a toddler, like it will calm down and it will get easier and easier with practice. Um, and then life becomes an amazing adventure. And then you start to even look for opportunities to humble yourself, believe it or not. Um, and anyway, so I think that's enough for today. Thank you for tuning in. And um, I know I'm a little bit later than normal, which is okay. And I'm going to spend the day focusing on my daughter and making a, a little surprise for her while she's at school and then welcoming her back back this afternoon after school with some treats and uh, some one-on-one -on -one attention and all the things. So it was fun to be with. She, they didn't have school yesterday because of the elections. And so we got to have sort of a day of celebrating with hanging out with some friends and, and doing some of that fun stuff yesterday. So it's always fun, to, I think, to stretch uh, birthdays out if we can. At least that's my way of doing it while I have the chance because she'll be off and living her own life before I know it. Yes, thank you. I will have a beautiful day and you all have a beautiful day too. And um, yeah, it's a good check in with yourself. Check in and, and try to be a student of yourself and watch yourself. Try to become a watcher and then check in with yourself and see if you can catch that ego red-handed and check in with your motivations and ways that you are trying to maybe be a little bit superior to other people and what your particular um, maybe bent, you know, what your particular proclivities are and how that shows up for you. Is it in the people pleasing and serving um, that can be really insidious um, or money, power, knowledge, um, how does it show up for you? Um, I'd, I'd love to know. And, um, and I invite you to check out the Enneagram too. And you can always, of course, reach out to me with any questions or wanting to know more. Um, I love, I, I geek out and not only over God's word, but the Enneagram too, because it really, I think has been a helpful, uh, tool for me to even get closer to God because I can, get closer to my true self and who he created me to be and not the false self and ego that I have been that most of us live from and um, causes us all kinds of chaos. Um, all right. Talk to you later. Have a great day. Rise and shine.